for such a time as this. These words are familiar to a number of you who are here this evening and to a number who are watching the live stream online. These words are found in the fourth chapter of the book of Esther. And with this phrase, Mordecai seeks to challenge his cousin Esther the queen to go before the king and plead on behalf of her people who were under serious threat due to a decree that the prime minister Haman had duped King Xerxes into signing. By saying for such a time as this, Mordecai is suggesting that perhaps God's providential leading has placed Esther in her position of leadership for just this moment in history. That she is meant to be there at just this time in order to speak on behalf of those who are being marginalized and threatened and to bring them encouragement and help and hope for such a time as this. And I would submit that this phrase, for such a time as this, is a phrase that is appropriate for any time of crisis and uncertainty and challenge, like the times that we are living in right now. For such a time as this, yes, these words are apropos and suit suitable for us as we begin the year 2022, because these words remind us that amidst the challenges that we face, God is still active. His providence is still at work to bring help and hope. In my remarks this evening, I would like to highlight several aspects of the pandemic that have brought frustration and dismay to many of us, some aspects that have disturbed us and emphasize what is needed for such a time as this. One of the things that has been most disturbing about the pandemic of the last nearly two years is the way that helpful outpatient medical treatments for COVID have been ridiculed and suppressed. Even though there is abundant evidence that when these treatments are administered early in the course of the disease, they are literally life-saving in nature. Some doctors have written prescriptions only to have pharmacists refuse to fill those prescriptions. Some doctors have had their medical license threatened if they decide to treat their sick patients with certain malign treatments. This lack of focus on treating the sick and taking care of them as soon as possible causes one to ask, what in the world is going on? Referring to the lack of interest that some medical practitioners had in providing early treatment to those with COVID, Someone summarized the advice that certain COVID-infected people were receiving in these words, take a couple of Tylenol and come see us in the hospital when your lips are turning purple for lack of oxygen. As a non-medical practitioner, but as one who has several medical practitioners in my family, my observation is that the nearly exclusive focus in some quarters on the vaccines and the lack of focus on treatments for COVID is shocking and misguided. In the future, when this situation is reviewed, history will not reflect well on medical practitioners who were not focused on treating their patients as soon as possible with that which could help them. For such a time as this, we need treatment, good, effective, early treatment. Another disturbing thing Another disturbing thing about the pandemic is the way that children have become pawns to be used to advance a certain agenda. Notwithstanding the lack of evidence that healthy children need the COVID injections in order to remain healthy and move ahead with their schooling and play and other activities, certain politicians and even some medical practitioners are pushing and in some cases even mandating injections to enable children to continue in schools, notwithstanding some of the clearly established and inherent risk in the current COVID vaccinations. While this type of plan may reap financial benefits for big pharmaceutical companies, 
it is not in the best interest of our children to become a huge medical experiment for a vaccination program that has already resulted in some serious adverse effects for some healthy individuals such as Maddie de Guerrier. As you are probably aware, just this week, the teachers union in a very large school district in the United States shut down the in-person education in that district, ostensibly due to the Omicron variant, even though there is nearly a unanimous consensus that being at school is the best and safest place for these children to be. A noteworthy quote related to this matter came from one FDA advisory committee member who stated, and I quote, we're never going to learn about how safe this vaccine is unless we start giving it. And this same person voted in favor of making the vaccines available to the children. But we need to be clear, our precious children, or in some cases, cases, our precious grandchildren, are not a pawn to achieve political objectives and must not become the subjects. They must not become the subjects of a grand medical experiment. For such a time as this, we need advocates, those who will speak out for what is best for our children. An additional disturbing aspect about the pandemic is the lack of attention to our overall health, the scant attention that has been paid to lifestyle practices for physical well-being. This would include the importance of eating healthfully, having a regular exercise plan, maintaining a good weight, and strengthening our overall immune system. I'm glad to report that these seminars tomorrow will be highlighting those very aspects of a holistic approach, and I hope you will be there to appreciate the seminars. One person said, speaking about the push to vaccinate children, commented that we are going to require children to be vaccinated with the attendant dangers that such a plan brings so that can make a lot of unhealthy adults be not so afraid. I would like to say this evening that there are some instructions given in Scripture regarding diet and lifestyle practices, instructions that tell us to abstain from that which is harmful and to show moderation in that which is good. Yes, there are some lifestyle choices that we can make to improve our overall health, to strengthen our immune system as we inevitably encounter a variety of viruses and pathogens. For such a time as this, we need to make wise choices for our health. Yet another disturbing aspect about the COVID situation is the way in which important freedoms have been stripped from people all over the earth. Economic freedom, the right to shop at certain stores and eat at certain restaurants. Employment freedom, the right to maintain your job regardless of your COVID vaccination status. Religious freedom, the right to worship with fellow believers at your church or synagogue. Just this week, I saw an article that synagogues and churches in a certain area of Canada were being forced to close. I also read about a dedicated pastor in the United States who serves in a large state to the west of Arizona. I wonder what state that might be who immigrated to the United States from an Asian country where freedom of worship was constrained and who was amazed to be told that he could face civil and criminal penalties if he opened his church and ministered to parishioners during the pandemic. Isn't it interesting that some of the same political leaders who closed down churches and synagogues, declaring them non-essential, chose to leave open such essential services as liquor stores and abortion clinics. This move to restrict our freedoms is misguided. It leads to perverse outcomes. Just this week, I personally had a friend who's involved in doing humanitarian work in a certain foreign country that I will not name, and she and her children are being held in an internment camp because they have tested positive for COVID, even though they aren't manifesting any symptoms, and they are among a number of people who are manifesting symptoms to the disease. 
For such a time as this, we need freedom. Another disturbing aspect worth noting is the way that people are being divided into two categories, the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. And this is being encouraged by important leaders in the political, medical, and sometimes even in religious communities. Political leaders who make comments like, our patience with the unvaccinated is wearing thin. Or, and I'm sorry to say this as a minister of the gospel, I have even heard of pastors telling people not to come to their place of worship if they are unvaccinated. The concept has been advocated that the unvaccinated should be excluded from medical treatments that perhaps they should be ineligible for organ transplant. For such a time as this, I believe we need to recover the view that all humans are part of a common web of humanity that was created in the image of God. In other words, whatever our vaccination status, we are image bearers of our divine creator in fact, whether you choose to receive the COVID vaccination or not is not the business of your government, of your employer, or the airlines. It is part of your private medical history that should remain confidential between you and your doctor. I would remind us that for such a time as this, it is incumbent on all of us to view everyone as equal and not marginalize anyone because of their vaccine status. You have probably noticed another disturbing aspect about the pandemic, which is the ever-changing narrative that we have been told. At first, vaccines were defined as that which prevented infection. And then the definition was later broadened to include that which stimulated the immune system. Early on, we were told by those who held important positions that you won't get COVID if you get vaccinated and that you can't spread COVID if you are vaccinated. Of course, the erroneous nature of those statements is now obvious to everyone. It has also been claimed that you will not get serious COVID that requires hospitalization if you are vaccinated. But those who have followed the official numbers from various countries around the world know that this isn't true. Very sadly, people have died, vaccinated and unvaccinated. Related to this is the lack of interest in exploring and even a willingness to deny serious adverse complications that clearly result from COVID vaccinations. Many of you have an awareness of healthy athletes collapsing on the field or in the arena after taking the jab. I have a personal connection with individuals who have experienced serious adverse impact from the COVID injections. I would say that one of the inevitable outgrowths of this shifting narrative is the diminished credibility of some authorities that were previously held in high esteem. Now, I'm not saying at all that everyone who takes the jab will have an adverse impact. I'm saying that we must take seriously the cases of those who do and leave this decision to the one receiving the vaccination. And as you may know, the narrative has shifted again this very week because now the operable term is no longer fully vaccinated, but up to date vaccinated. And how many and how often will up to date be no one can tell us because they don't know. We have had enough of the shifting narratives. For such a time as this, we need truth. The Bible declares you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I think one of the worst aspects of the past couple of years is the way that much of the news media has worked overtime to incite fear and to promote hysteria on the part of as many as possible. You've seen it, haven't you? The terror in the fa on the faces of people, the fear in their eyes, the apprehension that is apparent in their choices. People that are otherwise healthy choosing to isolate and stay away from one another. People not going to their jobs or avoiding important family occasions like weddings and funerals. My wife and I were out for a walk on a pleasant 
pathway near our home appropriately called the Greenway. It is a lovely place alongside a gurgling stream with a number of trees for shade. And to my dismay, my wife and I were met by a man out jogging who seemed to be struggling to breathe well because he had a serious mask on his face while jogging outside. I wondered if I should have said something to him like, sir, that's not healthy for you. And perhaps some of you saw the video clip of the young lady running in a track and field event for her high school, an outside event, running with a mask, presumably because she was required to, and collapsing near the finish line because she was gasping for breath. It is an unthinking, illogical fear that leads to outcomes like that. And I don't think there's ever going to be an end to the epidemic of fear because every time a new variant is announced, get ready, it will be the next big thing that the news media amplifies and obsesses over to cause us to fear. When you are reading the Bible, and that is one of the best resolutions you could make for this new year, I would like for you to notice the number of times the Bible says, fear not, or do not be afraid. Do you know how many times it says that? Well, you can find websites that say it is 365 times so that each day we are reminded not to fear. But actually, there's a little hyperbole in that number because it's not quite that many times. But it is true that over 100 times, Scripture tells us not to fear, not to be afraid. And what is the reason we should not fear? In other words, why shouldn't we be afraid with all that is going on in the world. There is a reason. We have a wonderful, benevolent, personal God who created us, who loves us, who wants to have a meaningful relationship with each and every one of us. It is this God who has said, trust me, have courage, have hope, have peace. For such a time as this, don't give in to the darkness of despair. Trust in God for such a time as this. We need courage and hope. 